Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby, and today I want to show you a quick, simple method for turning a photograph into basically like what looks like just painted artwork. So if you want like beautiful pictures of landscapes or animals or really anything on your walls, and you're not super artistic and can't find exactly what you're looking for, all you have to do is find a photograph, and I'm gonna show you how to turn that into what looks like a gorgeous painting. So first off, everything you're going to need, I will link down in the description, as always, along with my socials, but basically just start with photographs. I have a couple here, um, and these ignore the edges, if you will, because I printed these out, and as you can tell, my printer was not super happy about that, so, um, just ignore that. It'll turn out fine as soon as the paint's on there. And I actually got these from these really great website called um, Pexels. I'm gonna link it down below, but basically like the whole website says it's, you know, royalty free, like copy free, copyright free, like use their pictures um, for commercial or non-commercial or however you want to do it. It lists the um, photographers for the ones that have submitted and um, when you download a picture, it gives you the photographer's name and it's like, you know, give them a donation or shout out on social media or something of that nature. So I'm going to link the names of all of the photographers from the pictures that I um, downloaded down below along with the website. And um, yeah, it's totally free. It's a really cool website that I found. It's not like a sponsor or anything, obviously, but um, yeah, I figured like I should say that because I am like promoting them, but I thought it was pretty cool. I found it. I know a lot of people who are, you know, looking for photographs either for crafts or for their blog or whatever um, could use a site like that, especially because stock photos can get pretty pricey. So I will link everything down in the description below, but the photos are great. Like some of them are absolutely stunning. They're really high quality. Um, you can get them really, really large too. So awesome website. Definitely check that out. Otherwise, what you're gonna need is paint. I have acrylic, white, um, my tube's seen better days, but just white acrylic paint, a uh, paintbrush, and some paper towels. I use, I'm using this um, kind of coarse bristled one because I want kind of like a textured, rustic look to it, but use whatever paintbrush you want. Um, and then just something to mix your paint concoction in. Basically, you're thinning out your white paint and um, you're gonna use two parts paint to one part water. So I'm gonna mix that up and um, change the camera angle. We'll get to painting. There we go, my picture's down. I've got my two parts paint, one part water. I'm just gonna mix that up. There we go, nice, thin, basically white paint. So I've got the paper towels down just to protect the table. And I'm just gonna dip my brush and just start at the edges and kind of drag it towards the center. Like that at first. You have to move pretty quickly because acrylic paint does dry pretty fast. This is why I said don't worry about the um, printer not printing on the corners because that's where the highest concentration of the white is going to be. Then just kind of cross hatch it a little bit. Give it that textured brush look. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is go back in just with a dry, clean paper towel. Kinda of fold it into this little squiggle damper press thing and just kind of buff it out a little bit. Just places with heavier color or like over the water where you don't want the paint to be completely opaque and you wanna see a little bit more of the picture down here. Just kinda of use it to scrub the paint off a little bit basically. Here in the mountains and the sky. I'm leaving the white in the corners a little bit more because I want to disguise the fact that the printer didn't print, basically. So yeah, when you've got it pretty much how you want, go back in with another coat if you want. I just wanna do up here a little bit of touch up. There you go, and leave that to dry. Up next, we've got our beautiful, whoops, upside down, reflected bridge in the water. 
Since this one is a darker color, I'm gonna move a little bit more quickly than I did last time because there isn't a whole lot of uh, light color in here to disguise it with. Just kind of get your corners and drag the paint towards the center, just like last time. Cross hatch it a little bit, kind of get all of the different textures and brush strokes in there. And this does work better on thicker paper, like I printed this out on photo paper, so it's not normal printer paper, so it's not super flimsy and it's not getting like damp and just kind of, you know, soggy and destroyed. It's a little bit tougher than that because it is the actual photo paper. There we go, kind of scrub it out a little bit. So for this picture, it's also a landscape, and I wanted to show you what happens if you do things slightly differently. So I've diluted out my mixture a little bit because I wanted to show kind of, you know, half of them done with a stronger paint and half of them done with stronger water in the solution just to kind of give you a different look. And then I also have my dry paper towel, but I'm also introducing a wet paper towel. It's going to scrub it away a little bit differently. It's going to take a little bit more of the paint, let a little bit more of the picture show through. I thought that would be great on this one because it is very vibrantly colored. And then it's just got the white on the edges. So I thought this would be a good one to try that on. And I wanted to show you what happens if you use different kind of strengths in your mixture and wipe it away with a wet paper towel in addition to or instead of a dry one. So we're still going to work quickly. Kind of paint it all on just like that. Start at the edges, move in towards the center. Cross hatch it to get that texture on there. You can kind of see already like the water is making the paint separate a little bit. It's not sticking to the painting as firmly and you can actually kind of scrub it away just with the paintbrush a little bit, just where the colored parts are, which is pretty cool. I'm going to do like little circle motions. That's going to be my texture and I'm starting to feel resistance on my paintbrush, which lets me know that the paint is drying. Acrylic does dry very quickly. So I'm going to go in first with my wet one and just kind of lightly tap off the areas that I want more of the picture showing through and less of the paint. Obviously I want the edges white because that's where the printer ink failed, but this is just going to allow that beautiful landscape to show through. You can see it's picked up a little bit of the paint and a little bit of the color of the picture as well. That's okay. And I'm not rubbing it. This one, I'm just dabbing it. Go up into the sky a little bit. And just down here and it's also going to soften the brush marks i'm not rubbing it because i want the texture of the brush marks to come through but this is going to slightly blur them and soften them and make them look like they came from a finer brush than the very large brush that i use so that's what i'm going for here we go I think I took off some of the color with my mountain. That's okay. We'll just go back in with white and no one will know. Fixed. How's that for an easy fix? Perfect. So we'll let this one dry. I'm going to paint this on thickly in the corners. And then because this one is such a vibrantly colored picture, I'm not going to put any more on my brush. I'm just going to kind of sweep through what I've got. Because it's water, I'm going to kind of keep the texture of the brush strokes at the bottom kind of horizontal and then just cross hatch up here. I also kind of did it more lightly around the balloon. Basically the idea is I want the brush strokes to look like they came or that they're in the water kind of by themselves. So this is the damp paper towel and I'm just kind of cross hatching with that so you can see it gives a different texture than when you just dab with it. Go back in with my dry brush. Oh, 
Oop, just like that. There's still a loop of paint right there, so we'll just kind of brush that in. This is my dry paper towel right here that's creating this texture. I'm just kind of back brushing against the strokes that I put in. And right there, you can see I pressed too hard. I took a little bit of the ink from the page, so I'm just gonna go back in with the white, fix any scratch marks you might put in, and blend them. Next, I'm going to do my smaller pictures, and honestly, they're only smaller because I printed them out full size, and the printer destroyed the edges like so badly, so I just cut them into five by seven. You still see like slightly, but not so bad. But I think these two were actually my favorite ones, so I was happy I was able to salvage them. I just love this elephant one, it's just so beautiful. I'm just gonna paint the edges, kinda make it look like he's glowing through the center there, very little over the elephant himself. They're just such beautiful creatures, I love them. Dab, 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 so he comes through. This dabbing is with the wet paper towel, not the dry one. And I don't really have to worry about keeping the edges white because I cut off most of the bad printer areas. So this one I'm just dabbing and creating kind of a misty look for the forest. And then I'm just gonna kind of go in on him a little bit more, kind of bring him to the forefront by removing the white paint on him. Here we go. That's Mr. Elephant done. And we have the train going through the misty countryside. Super pretty. Just makes you want to travel, doesn't it? I don't even know where this photo is from, but makes me want to travel. Far off exotic places with giant bridges like that. And you know, maybe a castle. Why not? Go, got a cross hatch. This one I'm just gonna go in kind of with my dry paper towel. Get the train out. Dab down the center of each one of these little archways. Try to bring that out, and then we'll get a little bit of the hillside. But I'm going to leave the foggy, kind of white texture over the sky and let the train disappear into the smoke with that and just kind of get a little bit. So it just looks a little bit more aged. And then we're going to take out my fingerprint that I put at the bottom because that was not meant to be there. That one done. All right, now we'll let them dry. All right, you guys, so here's how one of them turned out. I will definitely do like a before and after for all of them so you can kind of see like what it does um, on the close up, but here's just kind of an idea. Look how pretty that is. It totally looks like just a beautiful painting of a landscape and it was super easy, super fast. I'm gonna cut it out and frame it so you guys can kind of get the full effect after I do the before and afters. It's still kind of drying, but it's been like 35 seconds. I'm gonna give it a full five minutes because it is acrylic paint and it'll be dry by then. But uh, yeah, we'll get this framed and let you see how it turned out. All right, this is the picture before. You can see on the sides where my printer just kind of like gave up, but that doesn't even actually matter because we're going to be painting it with the white. That's all gonna be hidden and it's gonna look, instead of a photograph, like a beautiful painted work of art. I love this one. This one is quite possibly my favorite, even though it's the one that the printer really ate up a lot. It's hard to tell once the actual like whitewash painting is on it. And I'm absolutely in love with this. I think it looks like a beautiful kind of pastoral countryside painting. This one, honestly, like it didn't start as my favorite as the picture, but the way it turned out, this one's probably my favorite. I love this picture. It's such a mood. But look at that elephant just like coming through the forest. I love the way the whitewash makes it look even more dreamy. The light behind him just kind of, you know, enhancing the fact that he's coming towards you. It's a very peaceful, serene picture. And here is how my hot air balloon turned out. I think I disguised the corners pretty well. The actual hot air balloon is definitely the star of the show and the ocean still looks like the ocean because of the way the brush strokes went. So this one turned out really well too. This is the after of the reflected bridge over the water. 
It's kind of hard to tell which way's up, but you do still have the rippling of the water to show that it is the bottom of the picture. So yeah, just very fairy tale and um, muted and super beautiful. So this is the after. Look at that. Super pretty. You can even like kind of barely see the part where I messed up and took the paint off the picture. But just by tossing a little bit more paint on top of it, like it just kind of looks like it's part of an actual painting, like the reflection and um, the mountain. So don't worry about messing up because it turns out great anyway. And I'm convinced this train is on its way to Hogwarts, but look at the um, bridge, how that turned out. I love how that turned out. So I just wiped down inside all of the archways, but kind of left it on the brick. But I love that. I think that actually kind of looks totally like a picture, like a painting. I mean, like, like the greenery coming up. This is awesome. These turned out really, really well. All right, so I'm getting them framed. They're all dried, but I wanted to show you before I show you what they look like on the walls because they're so good. Check that out. So pretty. Totally looks like a painting. Like, this is awesome. I love this. It worked out so well. Super pleased with this product. So, um, yeah, but you saw it's super fast, super easy, really budget friendly. Just print out your own pictures. Like I said, I will link the website I used down in the description along with my socials, along with everything you need for this project. Really doesn't take that long. And, um, yeah, great way to add some extra artistic glamour to your home. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you want to see more awesome DIY crafts, home decor inspiration, and I'll see you here again soon. Bye. Check it out. Total work of art. In its place of honor on the wall, of course. And I've got my elephant hung up. And I'm just trekking through the forest. So cute. All hung up, my favorite one. This totally looks like a gorgeous painting. I'm so excited for this. This looks awesome.